Greetings, chess players, and welcome to our Thanksgiving, free Thanksgiving break uh, chess camp uh, session with National Master Derek Wu. Um, some of you know Derek um, from his uh, time with the San Diego Surfers. Some of you know Derek because he's very popular on Twitch, and we actually have his Twitch channel right there below um you should definitely check that out and all of you know derek as the guy from the night shift game who uh, destroyed uh, pavel blatney at the uh, american open in that uh, beautiful beautiful game um derek it's wonderful to have you welcome I'm glad to be here thank you awesome so just so you're aware derek what uh, what I've done is uh, everybody who's um, attending the camp, if I use one of their questions in our session, they get some bonus points. So I'm going to okay. call out some usernames and ask you some questions. So from Anna, Anna Yen, um, she wants to, or he wants to know, what advice would you give to aspiring players out there? So I would say the most important thing is um, just keeping your head up because chess has lots of ups and downs. And the most important thing is to not get discouraged by, uh, you know, underperformances or, or just losses in general. So always just keep fighting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. And of course, um, part of that is uh, having, having a good uh, group of friends. Um, mm -hmm. to yeah. uh, go to tournaments with. That's uh, very helpful, having a supportive family. These things uh, help a lot, because chess is brutal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in uh, in basketball, you got a few other guys you can blame for a loss. In chess, right. you just have to, uh, you have to look at yourself. Um, let's see. Condretti, Sai, VKR. And I saw... I saw that person in our chat on YouTube already. Condretti Sai VKR. How did it feel to beat a grandmaster? Well, it. I mean, if on, I, I don't really know how to answer that question. I guess it just like feels really, really nice. Like, um, like the moment I knew I was gonna win, like I was just filled with excitement. And yeah, I don't really know what else to say besides, um, it was it was a really nice experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, who, who was the first uh, Grandmaster you, uh, you defeated? Uh, that would be uh, Nikola Nestorovic from Serbia. Yep. And, uh, ha um, you know, in that uh, Pavel Blatny game we looked at, um, how, did he, uh, how did he react after that game? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think the guy is, like, too big on facial facial expressions mm -hmm. so i i couldn't really tell but i mean obviously uh no one would be too thrilled about losing with with white right against yeah. uh, a lower rated opponent yeah so. i'm sure i'm sure it came as a surprise i mean i've i've gone through that game uh, many many times and uh it's really hard to find a comparison of a, another national master using the um the strategic thinking and the creativity and the accuracy that you used in that game, it's its very hard for me to find a comparable person with your title that's able to play um, in that in that fashion. And uh, you were 16 when you played that, right? Uh, 16 or 17. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. So, I mean, um, yeah, I, basically it's, you know, it's at least on par with, um, you know, in, in my opinion, of uh, international master play. And so, yeah, I think I think you would have been very surprised, to say the least. Yeah. Um, let's see, from Cyrus, uh, 2010B, did you have any problems learning chess? Um, well, there's a lot of resources out there, so I wouldn't say I would have any problems learning chess, but sometimes you can get frustrated by you know, putting in all this work but not exactly seeing the results you want right away. Um, that's more of a problem than actually learning your, itself because, I mean, there's just so many resources out there. You're, you're always just able to, you know, feed yourself information, like, 
just uh, you're, you're always able to work on your game. But improvement is, uh, or actually seeing the results is a different story, I would say. Yeah, sometimes uh, it's, it's like you have all this uh, data, but it takes, uh, it takes your brain a little bit to compile it, right? So you can exactly. put in all this, all this work, and especially to all of you who are training hard in this camp or, or otherwise, listen to, listen to what Derek's saying. Um, you know, you, you have to put in the work, but it's not, um, your, your results are not going to be direct and they aren't going to be linear, your improvement. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, there's going to be ups and downs and, uh, that's frustrating to uh, put in a lot of work and not see it right away, but it definitely will pay off. Um, there, you know, like, like I said, it's, you, you just have to, uh, give your brain time to compile it. Let's look at uh, WGM2B. Great username, by the way, WGM2B. I like it. Um, she says, I need to improve my endgame play. What would be your top three tips for improving my endgame play? Well, I think this one is uh, something a lot of um, players struggle with. Um, a lot of people... A lot of players just starting out, they, they focus everything on tactics and openings and middle games, which I think is, isn't a terrible idea. So a lot of people have this problem. I would say um, the main thing is, like, there, once again, there's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of videos on YouTube like, or other tutorials that will teach you end games. Um, there, the thing is, you have to differentiate between, like, practical end games and theoretical end games because some end games like it's just a matter of knowing whether or not it's drawing or winning uh, and what's the proper technique for each of those circumstances there's other end games which are more practical it's it's more like okay the evaluations around equal you know how do I outplay my opponents so um, there's different ways for improving each of those types of end games I would say for the theoretical kinds um, there's a lot of once again, there's a lot of tutorials out there. There's books you can read that will teach you theoretical endgames. And for practical endgames, I would say the main thing is just practice. And, um, yeah, nothing else, really. Just just lots of practice, and then you'll get a feel for how to play. Um, just You'll just get a feel for how to play them. As far as uh, traditional um, endgame books... Um, are there any that you, uh, that you have found particularly useful yourself? Um, right now I am currently reading Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual, oh, but wow. I would one. say that is, yeah, it, I would say it is quite advanced. Uh, I don't know if there's any, um, if there's any more, like, uh, any books that are more, you know, that tend to beginners more, but, mm -hmm. or appeal to beginners more, but, um, yeah, I would say chess tempo is good for theoretical end games. Um, Sorry. Yeah, this. yeah, I think chess tempo is pretty good. Um, yeah, 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 and um, the uh, uh, as far you know, uh, a couple books I might just toss out there um, for more basic. The Dvoretsky book is incredible, but it is super advanced. It is a mm -hmm. struggle. It is a struggle to get through, but uh, I can't, you know, Mark Dvoretsky, um, and he passed away uh, not too long ago, um, was a very, very nice um, person and an incredibly good, incredibly good, um, uh, his, his chess endgame book is, is just incredible. The interesting thing about Dvoretsky is, uh, um, as he told it to me, he... Uh, he only um, really focused on chess because he had a really bad math teacher one year. Otherwise, he would have been very, uh, very focused on math in his life, and uh, the teacher that was inspiring him uh, ended up uh, uh, leaving the school, and he got a really bad math teacher. So he turned to chess, and lucky for us, he did. Um, and then you mentioned, uh, what, what was the uh, uh, website you mentioned for Chess Tempo, was it? Uh, chess Tempo, yeah. yeah. Chess Tempo is pretty good for theoretical end games, I would nice. say. Nice. And, uh, okay, so those, those are some uh, excellent recommendations. Um, let's see. ERM999, what is your strategy of attacking and grinding down positions? Um, 
Well, I feel like attacking and grinding down are two completely different things. So for for attacking, I mean, uh, I mean, just follow normal attacking principles, I guess. Like bring all of your pieces into a game. Don't neglect uh, any pieces. Mm -hmm. Like you can think of a chess game as like just any other sport. Like if it's basketball, you need all your players, right? Yeah. So um, in chess, it's the same. You need all your pieces. Uh, grinding down positions, I would say it's more being patient and. Letting your opponents uh, sort of self-destruct because, uh, like, your opponent's also playing the game, so it's not just a one-player game. It's not. Sometimes you're not dependent on yourself winning the game. Sometimes it's just a, your opponent's, uh, you know, just self-destructing. Yeah, I, I mean, chess is a uh, that was that was a, a hard a hard question to answer because um, every game is unique, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. you're interacting with your opponents, so. Um, Certainly, there are there are themes, but uh, yeah, every every game you play is um, is unique um, to itself. It's it's you know you're creating art with your opponent. Um, let's see. Um, Draken Warrior wants to know what is your favorite piece. Uh, that's another tough one. I don't really think about. You know my favorite piece but i think the knight is quite cool um because it's just different from all the other pieces yeah there's brilliant combinations you can do with with the knight well i mean uh, we, i i was so inspired by that uh, game you played against pavel blatney oh yes and in, in the game of yeah, course every yeah time, every time every time you moved your knight you know the first time i played through it i was like of course that's what he means to do with it and then and then you improved it again you know, shortly thereafter. Yeah. So it was, it was a, it, it was a long journey for for your knight to end up on D three, but a uh, mm -hmm. just uh, in, incredible, incredible chess to get it there for sure. And speaking of that game, I uh, just brought it up right now to uh, let's see, right before you play, um, um, right, uh, your opponent uh, Pavo Blatny just played F four. And then you respond with e4 to him. Move 31, e4. Yes. Um, can you can you explain uh, what it felt like to play that move in that moment? I'm sure I'm sure the adrenaline must have been uh, must have been going a little bit. Well, yes, I I calculated by like move 29 or something. Like we would get to this position and. Uh, Okay, e4 makes a lot of sense. It defends my knights, and I'm threatening rook g6 after that. So I felt like f5 was pretty natural, but it actually doesn't stop my threat of rook g6. So I had a feeling that he was going to play f5, even though I knew f5 was actually a blunder, yeah, right? Yeah. But I was, I was super excited because he was sort of in time pressure, and f5 seems like the most natural move to the human eye. Yeah. So I was definitely, I was definitely really excited for that. And then of course you. Uh... You played Rook G6, and uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, he's got he's got to move his queen, but lose he's gonna get checkmated, right? I mean, exactly. Very, very exciting. Very, just you know, very it, the 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 journey of the knight to D3, and then the uh, the uh, really cool uh, E4 followed by uh, you know the the Rook G6. Um, because F5, you know, when you're picturing in your head, um, sometimes I see, you know, just personally, it's a weakness for me. Um, sometimes I won't see a, a pin a few moves ahead. Um, mm -hmm. And you said you uh, kind of, you kind of uh, uh, visualize this as a, uh, as the possibility you wanted on move 29. So. Yeah, something around there. Yeah, I realized that all these moves are pretty logical, and he might miss this trick. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, let's see. Tactical Vortex. We've got time for, I think, uh, one more question, then I'm going to give you um, just the uh, uh, a moment or two to uh, promote um, anything, anything you want to uh, share with the audience. But uh, Tactical Vortex has an interesting question here. Um, is playing in a school club better for improvement than playing rated matches? Um... I would say I would say that rated matches are actually more beneficial because they're they're more serious and if you take it more seriously you 
like it's it's going to mean more. You can actually learn more from it, right? Because like if you're playing just a club match or something, you can say, oh, okay, I lost, but I wasn't really taking this guy seriously. He's just my friend. You're not going to you know try to learn from it uh, the way you would from a rated match. So I would actually say rated matches are more beneficial. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I mean, uh, one of the uh, one of the things, and it's it's one of the big challenges right now, right? In the pandemic era, mm -hmm. is uh, yes. getting to play um, over the board rated chess. Um, that's really really hard to do in a safe in a safe way right now. Um, but uh, you know, uh, you, you have to play a lot of rated games. And um, uh, how many? Real fast, how many uh, USCF rated games have you played? Oh, like two thousand um... or something. <laughs> A lot for sure. I've, I've played like 700 rated events, uh -huh. and if you take like four or five games on average each event, I would say maybe, maybe somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's a lot of rated chess, and uh, that's exactly what you have to do um, if if you want to uh, kind of follow in in Derek's footsteps. Um, Derek, can you um, take a moment or two and uh, promote your Twitch and anything else? Yes, yeah, so I'll make this quick because uh, I think I have a game starting mm -hmm. soon. But um, yeah, so I, I do stream on Twitch. It is uh, twitch.tv slash GM Derek. So um, yeah, uh, I guess I'll see some of you guys over there. Definitely. In fact, um, if, if you have your schedule uh, worked out when you're, when you're going to be on uh, live stream, uh, just send it my way and I'll post it on the blog. Mm -hmm. And, uh, alert okay, people. cool. Yeah, I don't have a uh, set schedule right now. It's more improvised, but I'll let you guys know uh, once once something is figured out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Derek. This was a uh, this yeah. was a real treat. This this was a real real treat, and I am uh, so so thankful that you were able to uh, join us for this camp. Good luck with the rest of your tournaments. Pleasure. Thank you, thank you, and uh, yeah, hopefully everyone was inspired. So. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys later. See you then. later. Yep, bye. bye.